Welcome to Yin Yoga Lifestyle. I am your host, Colette Darville. Cultivating our body's resilience and inner silence and its application to all aspects of your life. Let's become enlightened and enjoy the power of intuitiveness and creativity. You are listening to Society Bites Radio, social interaction for the mind and soul. Hello, and thank you for joining us today. I am your host, Colette Darville, and this is Yin Yoga Lifestyle. So now let us take a deep, meditative breath. Inhale, so. Exhale, hum. As a music and choral teacher for 21 years, David Buchan has a rich history of music education. He has studied in California and then in San Francisco before going back to Canada and receiving a first degree on piano performance. After working as a professional musician, David completed a PDPP program at the University of Victoria in Canada before stepping into the world of teaching. David's passion is the piano, but he also plays the trombone, the trumpet, the flute, the clarinet, the bassoon, and the saxophone. When not teaching in choir classes, David can be found in various school bands, offering much appreciated help to young players. David was the assistant director for the acclaimed Vancouver Welshman's Choir for 20 years and had the great pleasure to perform twice at the Royal Albert Hall in London, as well as accompanying Kiri Tekanawa on her rise to fame, David's music talents as a performer have taken him across Belgium, France, the U.S., and India. David's philosophy on music is simply that music is life. He believes that music brings laughter and great joy to our lives, but music can also heal when we have suffered through some difficulties and it provides us with a new perspective on life. David especially finds classical jazz and Western music exceptionally interesting. His inspiration includes Frederick Chopin and Cindy Lauper. <laughs> Currently, <laughs> David teaches at Collingwood School in West Vancouver, Canada. Welcome to Yin Yoga Lifestyle, David. Hi, Colette. So <laughs> good to hear you. How are you today? Oh, we're doing great. It's a gorgeous day in Vancouver. Blue sky, uh, as far as the eye can see. We love that. We love that. Um, <laughs> such a beautiful place to be. Um, I, I'm going to ask you, um, at what age did you begin your interest in music? I mean, who and what inspired you? And, and also, too, what was, your, what was your first instrument that you played? I was, I was just trying to remember. I, her name was Mrs. Grigg. Um, and oh. she had kids as well. And she lived on the block and we had a cul-de-sac. And I remember I was about two or three. I don't remember it well, but I remember <laughs> the, the parties. <laughs> Cause the, she'd get the whole block together and she taught music to everybody. And we started at grade two and she just, it was informal classes with other kids. And we all got to know each other really well. And then once, I think it was once a month that they would put on a big show and even adults who hadn't done music forever, they'd get together and they'd show off their skills. And so recorder when I was two years old, Mrs. Grigg. Wow. Recorder at two years old. Yeah. Yeah. And then that led on to other things, started singing in the boys choir in Calgary. And there's a a stamp that has my face on it. (gasps) Uh, You can't get it anymore, but I was singing away (laughs) something and, and it went all around around Calgary. So I was famous as a, I think I was, eight years old by that time uh by junior high I was playing the bassoon and uh then the trombone and yeah so you so you you just would pick up a, an instrument and just start playing it or just teach yourself or how would that work I was really fortunate because I had I had lessons on on the 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 recorder with Mrs. Gregg, and then I had lessons on the bassoon with Linda Matarese. At, mm-hmm. uh, she was a bassoonist in the Calgary uh, Symphony, 
And so I had good training. I was really fortunate. Um, it matters when you're young to have good, good influences in your life because you can learn something the wrong way, as you know, in yoga, right? Yes, that's you right. you learn something the wrong way, it's way harder to relearn it the right way if you've already learned it the wrong way. Right, right. And um, so when did you, so when did you sort of come out of your, your shell and decide that, you know, you wanted to, before you began teaching, you wanted to perform too, right? Oh yeah. And I, I actually was, I, I was more into the lesson side of it. So I learned the piano. I was, I, I got my uh, grade eight was the highest I went in, in lessons in piano. But then by the time I graduated, I played the bassoon, the trombone, and I'd been singing and uh, I had my piano and I got friends together for our graduation. And on the day of graduation, which, which was my birthday, June 15th, and it was uh, it was our commencement at the school, and there were a thousand people in my graduating class, of which I knew like twenty in the band. Um, <laughs> and we 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 put on the performance and uh, had the band played, and then I played Greek, what is it, Greek concerto in A minor, wow. and Greek, I believe he died on June fifteenth, <gasps> uh, in the eighteen hundreds, I think, or early 1900s wow. and uh, my my I got a group of friends together and we sang at the commencement so that was my first choir and I was leading leading all of this and I didn't realize I liked teaching I didn't want to become a teacher I I wanted to it all the stars were aligning for me to be a performer <laughs> mm, mm. and you 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 were able to you were able to sort of follow that dream for a while weren't you I did. I, I went to university and I, as you said, I studied uh, in California. Then I, I studied at other places here in, in uh, Canada and I ended up in Victoria and I got my first degree in piano performance. And it, Oprah says, there's no such thing as luck. Right. Have you heard that? What, yes, her I description have. of what luck is. You, can you, can you enlighten us? Yeah, preparation meets opportunity. So you've prepared for it. Right. And then the yeah. opportunity comes. So if you're not preparing for anything, not much is going to happen. And people won't be able to say, oh, you're lucky. Or you won't be able to say, I was lucky. You right, right. So I, I had all these things that going on, and I was lucky. And I was prepared, and I met an opportunity. And I, I tried the performing thing, and I hated it. <laughs> it's such a hard life. It is a hard life, isn't it? <laughs> oh, you yeah. work so hard and get so little. Right, right. Until yeah. you, until you get to the big time, right? Until you get to the big time, yeah. Right. And, and then, and you sort of you realized um, that that's not where you wanted to be. So how did how did you decide that teaching was going to be it? I mean, did that happen naturally for you? It was sort of like a well. I, I put all this time into music and into my, my education. What, what am I going to do? And I had been teaching because I all, anybody in the arts, you're either a waiter or a teacher. Right. And I did both. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so I started, I, I started uh, thinking maybe I should go into education. So I took a two year post degree program, which they call a PDPP or they did back then. I think right. it's just PDP. Yeah. So that was, oh my, that was my intro to education. I, I went, well, that first one didn't resonate with me. So right. let's try something else. So I got into, got into university and, and then education through that, the second degree. So, um, you know, in getting into a little bit more into the, into music, um, Studies have shown that, you know, the musical training really helps students. So, um, you know, it helps develop the areas of the brain related to language and reasoning and coordination. And that's mm -hmm. only a few, few benefits. Um, you know, can you talk more a bit about this? Not necessarily about the studies, but, you know, sort of like music being another form of language. And um, in your experience, like, what have you seen? Well, yeah, it's been it's been interesting because uh at the very end of this year i got an email from a parent about a study that came out at ubc and so 
uh, this this guy, uh, Doctor Guzalxis, mm-hmm. uh, he he put in a a, a psychology uh, journal. It's called the Journal of Educational Psychology in June twenty fourth, and he talks about music is as good for the brain as it is for the soul, and it's talking about how music making requires anticipation, planning, memory, synchronization mm-hmm. with other people in an ensemble shifting between mental and physical tasks and you're hearing music in your mind while you're looking at notation. And I, I encounter all those every day and you, you see even students like the school that I'm at, uh, they're very academically driven Mm -hmm. and they, they sometimes are encountering challenges all the way up to grade 12. And these are students who get into like all the best universities in the world, it, mm-hmm. it's challenging. It's another language. Even if it's English, the music side of it, the written notation, it's another language. Um, and even the languages that you deal in, whether it's French or Italian or, right. or English, it right. challenges you constantly. Yeah. yeah, and you are you are an amazing, amazing teacher. I have to tell you that because I know. I know David is an amazing Aww. teacher. Oh, and he has a beautiful voice too. So at some point we'll get him to sing a little ditty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that the listeners all over the world can hear you. <laughs> Only if it's a duet. <laughs> Only if it's a duet. Uh, maybe not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, From the beautiful singer comes that request. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, Those of you listening who don't know Colette Darville has such a beautiful voice and is oh, a phenomenal teacher. You know that. You've seen that side of her. You're too kind. You're too kind. That's a little secret I was keeping kind of hidden for a while, <laughs> but now it's out there. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so so you teach at Collingwood School in, in Vancouver um, at British Columbia mm-hmm. in Canada, and that's in Canada for all our, our worldwide listeners. Um, can you talk... Uh, about the importance of of helping students perform and some of the music programs that I know that are de- near and dear to your heart. Oh well, I I think the the main the main thing that I like seeing the progress with the students is what's the number one fear for most people? Right. Yeah. Public it's, speaking. Right. It's terrifying being out there in front of other people. What you do so instinctively, other people, it stresses them out Mm -hmm. so much. And so just getting the students up and performing, they're going to all have to get a job. They're going to all have to um, put themselves out there. Yeah. Yeah. They've got to get out there and uh, they'll be judged by somebody if they, unless they're the very rare people who never will have to do anything. They've got so much more money than God, but right. even they will want to, they'll want something. And in order to get that something, they'll need to impress somebody. They'll be judged by somebody. Right. And so, so every, every time you perform or I'm putting the students up on stage and they're, they're feeling that pressure. So they're getting used to it. They're getting, they're getting, uh, they're getting the goals because my, even it's academically really driven school. We, they do really well. We, we get invited to the nationals every year. We're at that level. We're getting golds when we go internationally or just in Canada. And, um, it's just, it's a good experience seeing them grow. Right. Yes. And some of them, some of them, it takes a lot of courage for them to get, get up on stage, even though they're with a, a group. Um, it does take a lot yeah. of, a lot of, um, a lot of energy and a lot of sort of maybe self-talk as well, right? Yeah, yeah. It, we all hear those negative voices and we have to just let them go and go on. We have to right. focus on not hearing those, not listening to them, not believing them. They'll always be there, but just that talk, they've got to change it to positive talk. They've got to, right. the athlete's mindset, they do that so well in athletics. Just, I can yeah. do this, I can do this, I can do this. Yeah, but when you're when you're singing, um, and you've been practicing and practicing and practicing and nurturing your voice and nurturing your voice, and it's still you know reaching reaching that goal every time you open your mouth, right? Mm 